they say hombre hold another bottle look a little closer cigar in moscato an actor in improv coming from chicago alto make way for paul Vato. We're, we're going to do uh, one hour of uh, interpretive dance, uh, and then we'll get the show going. I love it. I'm in. Uh, we'll, we'll just we'll just give it another minute to let people come in. Normally, if you'd already been on here for a while, you know you could ping your friends, just just like on, on the other app. How's my lighting? Is the, the lighting okay? If if you I if you click, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and if that bothers you, we can always turn it off because people can clap. You guys want to clap? They can oh, laugh. Yeah. They they can they can do stuff like that. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. This is fun. I, I I think you know you might consider even using this for your amazing interviews, and and we'll talk about that. So let me turn off the wait bot as people are arriving. This is amazing. I love this. Isn't this great? So it's called Fireside, and uh, it started by by a young lady, Fallon Fatemi, I believe was her name, and uh, Mark Cuban is one of the big investors. So I'm super excited to bring all of all of uh, you know my podcasts over here, especially with you know celebrities such as yourself, Kay Parker <laughs> from Canada. Thanks for having me. I love it. It is wonderful to have you. Let me, I guess let's begin the show because it's already three minutes after. Rule of threes, either start on one or start on three. So I want to thank everyone that is here. I know it's Sunday and uh, Christos Anesti, for those of you uh, that celebrate Orthodox Easter. I just call it Greek Easter because the the only Orthodox Christians I know are Greek. So there you go. Uh, So happy Greek Easter. Christ has risen. Well, this is good. I forgot to tell you, this is a, a Christian show. No, I'm kidding. Um, but this is Paul Vato Presents. This is our first episode here. Of- <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, it's technically season two, episode one. Uh, and I have the distinct honor and pleasure of speaking with Kay Parker, uh, a friend uh, and uh, a business associate. I, I Business, I don't know, uh, podcasting, TikToking, a peer, let's say. So, Kay, I want to thank you for being on Paul Votto Presents and uh, taking time from your weekend busy and busy life to be here. So thank you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. You're most welcome. I love it. Isn't this wonderful? It's I think it's an amazing platform where, where people can, can chat like this. Uh, you can also put your phone in the horizontal. Uh, I think this is great, especially when you have four people up on stage. Uh, if you want, we can go. What would you rather? Whatever, wherever you're most comfortable. If you're more no, comfortable, this is great. I'm just playing around. You got sound effects. You can change things. It's fabulous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're more comfortable laying down or standing straight up, I'm, I'm, I'm free. I'm willing to do whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much for taking time to to do this here on Fireside. And for those, I think most people know this, but uh, Kay, uh, welcome to Fireside because you're new. I'm I'm glad that you were able to sign up with with uh, very <laughs> little no difficulty. And just so you know, the podcast lives on in here. We can also download it and re-upload it as a podcast. And um, do you want to maybe begin by telling us just a little bit about yourself and and your background and where you're from, and then we can go into into other questions uh, and all that great, good stuff. Yeah, it's so weird. Like when people ask me, because I'm so used to asking other people, like you were on my show. Um, you're telling me just like recently, your what was your favorite episode? Oh, well, I guess we should let people know that you have your own podcast, of course, uh, which is called, of course, like, you know, like everyone does, uh, called Trials, Trials and Tribulations. And yeah. I thought it was amazing. My favorite, personal favorite, was episode 38. But that... Oh, I see. You're an entertainment narcissist. That was your episode. That was my episode. Uh, And it was fantastic. I've watched them all. (laughs) 
And I must say, it was probably the best one we've done to date. So, so, and I know that you have now over 70. Yeah, so I guess I'll back up now. I'll give myself a bio. Um, my name's Kate Parker. Um, uh, like it's been, I guess, three years that the entertainment industry brought me back after I tried to escape it for over a decade. Um, I did the marriage, settling down, baby thing. I did that for a good solid decade. And then I just was having fun on TikTok one day. And then all of a sudden, a couple of videos went viral. People started seeing me. Make a long story short, I had my manager that I have now found me on TikTok. I had a couple of managers that found me and they're like, you have something like, what was your passion? I was like, oh, well, that was when I was a little girl. And, you know, now I have like, they're like, well, you should like think about it because you have something unique that you can offer people. Um, so then I started going back into doing like TV personality. I love these little sound effects. So currently I am doing, well, this is my third season on Sink to the Shot Canada. Um, so I am a judge on there, which is really exciting. And we actually can start streaming now uh, in June for the, this upcoming season that we have going on. So that's really exciting. Um, it's a singer songwriters music competition. Um, I also, again, like we were talking about previously, I have my own podcast, Trials and Tribulations. And yeah, I'm on episode, like, I think I'm in the seventies and that's not even including the ones that I did in person that I kind of like post on YouTube periodically. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm like really bad at technology stuff. As you saw me just trying to get in here. So I'm definitely eventually going to have to hire a full team and a full studio and actually make this. Um, I don't know. I absolutely love it. And now that I've been doing it consistently for over a year and the people that I've been having on and the things that I've learned uh, have been so it, it's just changed my life. And yeah, it's just so funny downloading an app just for fun while I was a stay at home mom taking care of children. It just changed my life completely. Um, I also recently uh, wrote an article for authority magazine. So that just got published. And because of that, I've been doing a lot more podcasts. Um, I'm on USA global TV this week. So that's going to be exciting. Um, and yeah, I, I think there was one. Oh, and I am going to be in Vegas and I'm going to see you, which is super exciting. So yeah, I just um, kind of got associated with a clothing line and they hired me to kind of get it going. Um, so I'm going to be doing, I'm kind of like their marketing project manager campaign. We're just getting the clothing line up and running. It completely correlates to uh, my health and wellness, trials and tribulations. Uh, we have the exact same pillars and mission statement. So it was a perfect project for me to be kind of immersed in and now uh, we're gonna go to Vegas and we're gonna do a video shoot for a new clothing line we're dropping. So a lot of fun stuff is happening. That's amazing. And I would imagine that they find you through TikTok. Is that how, how they connected so, with you or? Yeah, the funny thing with that is they found me through Instagram. So I'm in the art world a lot. I'm absolutely fascinated with art. It's part of like the entertainment industry. I'm on all aspects. So you know, I do acting. Um, I've done acting my whole life. I've also been a dancer my whole life. I've been singing my whole life. I always wanted to be a triple threat. So the visual arts is still a part of that. I love, love, love visual arts. And when I was uh, <laughs> when I was in Alberta uh, meeting my girlfriend, she was opening up her own um, first exhibit. Uh, she tagged me in a bunch of stuff and they found me through there. And that's just how fascinating social media is. It's all about who you know and posting it you don't know who's watching right that's uh that's 100 percent right and i had a total you know shift of my mind there a, a mind shift when um i realized that you know we we should be using social media as content creators for business not as consumers you know i I've, there's enough consumers out there and i i was guilty of that where it was just like entertain me entertain me you know click 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 facebook whatnot and then of course when i uh you know, I was like, what a waste of all this time when I could have just been creating content to either promote Vato cigars or promote uh, my acting or anything like that instead of just putting it out there uh, and, and just watching other people create and stuff. So it, it is the power of social media. And I think this is one of those platforms that's that's like that, that that's really powerful. It makes it pretty easy, you know, for, for content creators, for, you know, for example, to do this podcast, 
I can download it and then re-upload it on, you know, on my uh, Anchor account and Spotify and whatnot. So you, you're right. I mean, it's, it's amazing the power of social media. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things um, about social media is you have so much pressure with the algorithm to be consistent and to be every single app wants your full attention. And so I always tell other creators like, yes, be consistent. Yes, drive hard. Yes, continue your network. But also my biggest thing is make sure you take a time out. Um, like I was just telling you today, I have literally spent all week essentially taking a time out because as soon as I published my article, my world blew up and I was getting interviewed in the news in Australia. So I'd be working all day, all night. And you're trying to like pull yourself in 500 different directions. And I guess like my biggest thing that I'm learning is how to balance being a creator, being a social media, being the influence. I, I hate saying it out loud. <laughs> Um, just being that personality and just trying to kind of make sure that you're hitting all aspects of your life. Cause here I am talking about mental health and wellness, but yet some days, like how long is it before I like even just feed myself? Cause I'm so busy running around. It, that, that, that is so true. Uh, was your article on, uh, mental health and wellness, uh, and where can people find it? Yeah, so um, I do have a link tree. So I have at Kate Parker Official is essentially where everything is. I just launched a website, but it's not ready. It's just kind of like, hey, I got the link. I put a picture of myself on there. And then we, I have people that are working on that right now. But my link tree on my Instagram has the link. It's on um, authoritymagazinemedium.com. Um, but the link's there. And that will kind of bring you to every aspect of my life, including like the shot and trials and tribulations and so on and so forth. But yeah, um, it was really sad how kind of everything came to be, but the articles, um, about five ways, uh, to heal after a dramatic loss and life change. And essentially once I kind of went with my brand full time, that was after the loss of my son and my whole life changed. So I made a huge article where I shared my story um, and it's, it's really sad. So if you want a good cry, like spend 34 minutes reading my story. Um, but it's an empowerful one because it's just kind of saying like, yes, I lost my son and I'm going through a divorce. And for the past three years, my life has been all about kind of letting go, rebuilding myself, choosing myself, finding my purpose, finding Uh oh. Um, my son passing away that I actually found my purpose, which is a really, yeah, it was a really powerful thing. Would you mind re repeating like the last 10 seconds because, or 15 seconds because I don't, you were freezing and I don't know if it was just me or if it was on your end. Oh, I'm sorry. No, sorry. Um, I said I'm in the country, so sometimes my internet just goes out. I, country girl um but yeah no it was uh I was just saying it happens when as soon as my son passed away that's when I kind of decided to choose me choose my dreams follow my passion and what I went through and still I'm going through as I'm going through the divorce process it's actually taking all these things and I grew as a person and I learned so much about myself and what I wanted and with COVID and being isolated it really gave me the chance to kind of look internally and what I liked and what I didn't like. I did a lot of shadow work, spirituality work, mental health. I learned all about emotion regulation, distress tolerance. And my whole life was just in these past three years was about healing and rebuilding myself and finding myself. And honestly, through all the pain that I've been going through is how I found myself. And now I'm privileged that I have such a platform where, yeah, you know, like my TikTok's all about jokes and I have so many different I guess like tracks of my brand. But um, my biggest thing right now is just really empowering um, people through healing. Um, that's been a really big part of uh, what I want my brand to kind of, and that kind of, I guess, correlates with trials and tribulations a lot too, which saved me for this past like two years. Wow, what what an amazing story. And uh, and I don't know if you'd want to rehash this. I mean, you, did, you wrote about it, but 
I didn't I didn't know about you, your son, so my condolences, and I don't know how long it's been, and not that it ever, uh, you know, it's going to make it uh, any easier, but is that something that, that you would like to speak on, or is that something that you could share with our audience? Or if, And if you don't yeah. want to, of course, that's... No, no. So it happened three years ago, and it was just a really, and I wrote the whole story in my article, but in short, essentially, I was in my second trimester of my pregnancy, and it was around Christmas time, and I went in to get like a routine ultrasound. I just had one a couple of days prior, so they were saying everything was perfect. He looked great, and I go into the ultrasound, and then all of a sudden, his heartbeat stopped. And at first I was like, well, that's weird because his heart rate, like I just heard it a couple of days prior. So how in three days can a heart just stop? And that was a really hard thing for me to wrap my head around. And so I remember going to my doctor's office because the technician wouldn't tell me, but I have three other children. So I know when they just turn off the monitor and they don't say anything, something bad is happening. So I went to my doctor's and I feel so sorry for the person who was behind the desk. Cause I was like, can I swear on here? But I was like, I'm not going to wait while you just like tell me that my kid's dead. Like I was just at a total state of like anger and I wasn't in a good place, obviously. So she brought me right to the back and the doctor said, yeah, like sometimes miscarriage just happen and there's no, nothing you can, you're never going to find out the answer like, and she, to be honest, everything was a complete blur. Uh, I had my children, my other kids Christmas concert that night. I had my daughter's dance recital concert that night. And I had a maternity photo shoot that day right after the ultrasound. So that was a really hard thing for me. So I had, I was just going about my day and trying to like mask my pain and hide my pain. And I still did the photo shoot. That was the craziest part is that I told him like, hey, I just found out the baby passed away, but I still want the photo shoot. So now when I look at the photo shoot, it's more or less kind of a different meaning behind it. And it was like that last, I don't know, the, what he captured is so precious to me now. And I'm so happy I have those photos. But uh, yeah, to make a long story short, I decided to just kind of hold on to him until my body naturally like decided to let him go. And then this all happened in December. I gave birth to him in January and I was really sick and I had to go for emergency surgery afterwards due to complications and my mental health took like a really bad turn. I was in a really dark place. I felt very alone and then after my surgery, I physically felt better. So that's when I went to Vegas and that's when as soon as we landed, I got robbed and they mugged and they took everything I had and that kind of turned my psyche to like a whole new level because I felt alone again. And I guess that's what really started my healing journey was, okay, at the end of the day, all I have is myself. So I better really dig deep inside my shadow self. And why do I feel alone? And I need to be whole enough that I don't put expectations on anybody else. So I only can look at myself for that. I should be so full and whole on my own that I don't require anything from anybody else. And I did. I had like a massive mental health journey. I made it really cool. And I was in like this crisis mode where it was like a fight, flight, or freeze. And yeah, you'll read it all if you want to read my story. But essentially these bad choices and Vegas and all these little things that crept up kind of made a, it was like the camel that broke the, what's that? The straw that broke the camel's straw that back. Broke the camel's back. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that one last thing that, that, uh, that sends you. Yeah. Do, do you want to share your, your Vegas story? Because uh, not to make light of, of a, what could have been a potentially horrible situation. And I'm glad though that you're coming back to Vegas and giving us a second chance. Uh, what happened in Vegas? Yeah. Okay, everything does not stay in Vegas in this case. But um, yeah, so I just had surgery. Um, I just finished a bunch of like uh, iron. So I lost a lot of blood. So I finished all my IV and I was like functional. So um, I started going back to work part time. And I was like, you know what? If we're going to fix this marriage, we need to get away. I always wanted to see Cirque du Soleil, um, the Beatles one love. That was on my bucket list. And I was like, I would really like to see that. 
Vegas is not far away. We can just go for a weekend. And I was like, I'm going to, I was like trying to convince my husband at the time. I'm like, okay, listen, I will make this as cheap as possible. If you just take me to Vegas, I always wanted to birthday. And I just, it's Vegas. You envision so many amazing things. Yeah. So, so, sorry, you, you, and, you froze uh, for a second. Go ahead. No, no, you, you, no. you froze for a second. But, but, <laughs> We, we, we got everything. Go ahead. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so we decided to go and I booked through Airbnb. I booked like the cheapest spot because I like when you're on the strip and you book hotels, I'm like, well, you have to pay every night on top of that because like there's like a hotel fee um, on Reserve. top of the room rates. And I was like, I'm too. Yeah. And I was like, I'm too cheap for that. I bet I could find something cheaper on Airbnb, which I did. And it was right off the strip. So I was like, that's perfect. It's not too far off the strip. This is me, a Canadian girl that literally knows nothing about Vegas, but it like looked clean. The reviews, everything like looked fine. So we took the night flight. We got there really late at night and we get dropped off, off the plane and we take the cab and... I'm looking at where this cab's taking us. And I was like, are we in the fucking ghetto? Like, this cannot be any worse. Like, this is not where I booked. And he dropped us off at this place where there's like tons and tons of like these little mini like apartments. But there was no one in the lobby. And I had the main address, but I didn't have like the house. So I didn't know. I didn't know where to get the key. I was trying to get a hold of the Airbnb person. Nobody's getting a hold of me. My taxi driver is like, okay, you're here. And he like speeds off like no tomorrow. It's like 2 a.m. And I'm like, okay, I just had this like gut instinct that we shouldn't stay where we were. So I was like, you know what? I like, so I went to my husband. And I was like, okay, we got to, we got to find some light. I know this sounds stupid, but I was like, we need to find a public place with Wi-Fi so I could call Airbnb because something's going on. I, I have this like sense in my gut that something bad's going to happen. And I was like, let's just find somewhere where there's people, so nothing can happen to us. We're new here, it's Vegas, God knows what's gonna happen. So we're walking with all of our luggage. I'm like, literally at the dead of night, in the ghetto of Vegas, and there's like crackheads everywhere. Like it, it was like the worst place you can be in Vegas is where I was. And I'm walking by myself, and you have to understand, like my husband at the time is like a skinny white, farmer who is Mennonite, German Mennonite, who hasn't, he doesn't really, like he stays within his farm and he doesn't really go far from that. He's, he's not, he likes, he's a, he's an introvert. Let's just put it that way. So we go to this fast food. I don't even know what it's called, but they have hamburgers and fries and all that. I'm not obviously from Vegas. So I don't even remember what it was called. And we are knocking on the door for like to try to get us to come in. And I was like, hey, we just need to make a few calls. And they're like, yeah, we're not opening the door. And so that should have been the first sign that we should have left because they wouldn't even like let us go in to make a few calls because they have to lock up after a certain time. So we are right by an intersection and we were staying like right by the lights. So I'm like calling my back's turned this way and I'm like calling Airbnb, screaming at them. And I'm like, what is happening? Like I'm in the ghetto. I don't know where to sleep tonight, blah, blah, blah. And they're trying to figure out what's going on. They're, they're trying to contact like the host for the Airbnb. And I turn around and I hear like my husband at the time going like, help, help. And this guy is like trying to take my, like my husband at the time's luggage. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, I do not need to deal with this today. So I go behind, I wish this was a joke. I go behind the guy's back, rip him off my husband. He picks me up. He's like swore. I don't know if I can swear on here, but he swears at me, calls me everything out of the book and like throws me across the parking lot. And then I'm like, now I'm a little scrappy. I'm a little feisty. And so I'm like, all right, here we go. And like my ex could see like the rage in my eyes at this point. And he's like, no, no. He's like, just let him have everything. I'm like, are you kidding? I'm, I'm like, all my best lingerie, my like all my like, no, I'm not letting him have it. That's all my name. Like all my best stuff is in that suitcase. Like I am not replacing all that stuff. And I had all my, like my passports, everything. 
It's like, there's no freaking way. He's like, it's Vegas. Guns are allowed here. Please do not get us killed. It's not worth it. So I was like, all right. So like, I just drop all my stuff. He takes it and runs with our stuff. And then, so we had to call like the sheriff and all, is that what you guys call them? Sheriffs? We had a call and we spent. It depends. Yeah. It depends where you're at. There, there's the county, there's Metro, there's the sheriff's department. So yeah, wherever we were, we got the main guys come. They're like, oh no, Canadians. Like it was a whole thing. And they're like, you are not leaving until like we find your stuff. Long story short, after hours and hours of searching, they, it was like a whole scam on Airbnb. So this is what they do. And I didn't even know that was a thing. So Airbnb and I had a massive fight for weeks. Cause I was like, well, I'm not paying for all of this. Like, this is your platform. So you need to be responsible. This isn't a me issue. So I got all mad with Airbnb. They resolved it after fighting a lot, but they ended up, um, I don't know. We were with like a whole bunch of people, but they ended up finding all of our stuff in a dumpster and it was full of like cat litter and cat pee. And they're like, Hey, here you go. And they put everything in a bag and gave it to me. And I was like, I'm sorry. I still don't have a place to live, <laughs> like to stay. And I was like, and now you're giving me back all this stuff that's full of pee and cat litter. And I'm just supposed to what? you think I'm going to wear any of this ever again? And I was so overwhelmed. And my ex was like in a state of shock. Like he got like punches to the head. Like he had a big like thing right here from it. And he's like, I, like he was just, I, and it's funny cause he doesn't even connect it. Like, it's like he totally erased that moment from his brain Um, which is probably like a defense mechanism, but he definitely was in a state of shock. He just wanted to go home. And I'm like, look, like we're not going home. We're ready here. We better make the, like the best of it. So luckily his father has like condos and stuff like that. So even though I should have done that in the beginning, but I was trying to be cheap and look what happens when you try to be cheap. So he just went to the condo that his dad has and we stayed there. We got new luggage, new clothes, and we just went about our time in Vegas. But it was kind of dampered because even though we were trying to make the best of it, I never felt so violated in my entire life. And it was crazy. It was just like I lost my kid and I had no control over it, trying to make memorable, happy moments to save my marriage. And it just, everything just kept on happening. And like for three years straight, it's been three years since I lost them. Like my life had just started becoming positive now. Cause it was just one thing after another for three years straight while I was trying to like deal with everything. It was crazy. But that's my, that's my Vegas story. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've heard crazy stories, but that's like, Hey, welcome to Vegas. Give us all your shit. Normally at least we let you keep your money and, and, and belongings until you're about to leave. You know, and then we'll take everything. But to to you know the, the day you set the second you set foot in Vegas, that's what happens. But yeah, I mean, not to blame the victim, but you're you're right. Uh, uh, Airbnbs is 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 to blame. You know, they allowed that to happen on their on their platform. But you're trying to be cheap, and that's what happens. Um, that's I'm I'm a big proponent of downtown Las Vegas because there are no resort fees at like Binion's or Four Queens. But the, but that's one of the almost casino scams in that the, in order to get ranked, you know, higher on Expedia and on all these sites, they're like, Oh, our rooms are only 50 bucks tonight. You're like, what? 50 bucks at, at uh, Mandalay or wherever on the strip. And, and, uh, and then all of a sudden when you get there, it's like, Oh, but it's another 50 a night for the resort fee, you know? So, you, so if the room's a hundred bucks a night, you're like, okay, that's not bad. I, I can pay that. But now you're paying 150 or, you know, 200. So that's something to look out for. And, and, uh, you know, with, with, with Vegas, I mean, it's almost, you want to be safe. You want to be around people. So you want to be either on the strip or even on downtown Fremont street, you know, yeah. that, that that's where you, you want to be. And then you, cause you're going to end up spending money on Ubers and cabs. If you stay off the strip, you know, might as well be on the strip where you can just quickly get from one casino. To, well, it's never quick, but you know, that's <laughs> like downtown because that is quick. You can hit all seven casinos in, in, in an hour if you wanted to, you know, 
And you know what? The condo was great. We went to the condo. They do have like a shuttle service. So the shuttle just brought us like to and back for the rest of the trip. I was so afraid of everybody and everything. I was so spooked out. I would not let anybody touch me. I wouldn't let anybody near me. I was so weird the entire trip. And I went to um, a smash room where I just broke a bunch of shit because I was so mad at this point. And so one of the things we did was we got, um, we Ubered to a place and I just broke a ton of shit and that was really great. So I, I recommend that for everybody. <laughs> I love that. Well, <laughs> uh, I can, I can then see how, you know, the, the theme, how long have you been doing trials and tribulations? Trials and tribulations. This is my second year. So the- I did, yeah, I did one year of full like healing, just like physical and just trying to like do the actual healing healing work and then I think before trials and tribulations my tiktok account was at like 60,000 and that was just me being silly like this was just me enjoying having fun with it and that's when my first manager found me and he was like hey like you don't even follow anybody back yet everybody's following you and he was like you have a really cool platform he's like you should like he's like what are you gonna do he's like it's when you have a platform, it's your duty to do good with it. And I was like, right. He's like, so let's do something positive. He's like, what do you want? And it was the first time when somebody really asked me that. Um, one of the things that I learned through my healing is that I'm very much a people pleaser. Um, I'm adopted. So for adopted people, typically, we have this need to be wanted and to be liked and to be needed. And we never want people to be upset with us because we're always just trying to belong and find ourselves through other people. And it's just, I know for me, it's like when somebody's like, no, we don't want you. It's kind of like you spend your whole entire life trying to get that um, validation and that from somebody else. So that was something that I learned through my healing. And when I was thinking about that. I'm like, well, what is, what is something that I don't want people to feel? And I'm like, right. I don't want people to feel the way I'm feeling. So what can I do for other people to help them feel seen? What can I offer for people to be heard? What can I do? What can I offer? What platform can I create that makes anybody feel like they belong? And essentially that's what I created for trials and tribulations. And It's just talking. I don't have a niche that would defeat the entire purpose. I had a lot of people trying to like bring trials and tribulations on board and they're like, okay, like you have to like niche it down. I'm like, but then that, that, that's not even my point in my show. I've had celebrities on it. And I also have homeless people who are drug addicts that have this crazy story about how they came out of it through their addictions. And this one person I had, that's what he was. He was homeless. He was an addict. Um, he locked himself in his room cause rehab never worked. And he actually like learned how to like do art just to waste the time, I guess, while he was going through like the recovery processes of addiction. And he ended up doing something for 50 cent tagged a minute and then he shared it and now he blew up. And so people have these stories and it's just really, um, about giving people the time to day and not just taking a step outside of ourselves because we're so consumed with our own lives that we actually don't give any time to talk about other people's lives and what they've been through. And so with trials and tribulations, we talk about their successes, their failures, and what they've gone through to be where they are today. And the whole point is that I want it to be a non-judgment zone where anybody and everybody can come on and I guarantee you, you will connect with something that somebody has to say. And my goal is for people just to connect with one another. Although like you and I look very different, but our insides are the same. Our feelings are the same. Our insecurities are the same. We all are humans with the same basic human truths of wanting to belong. And once we meet those human truths and kind of open ourselves to other people, that is literally the only reason I think is why I am where I am today is because every single week, just like a therapy session, I had somebody come on and it gave me that little bit of hope and other people who are watching and being like, Hey, you're not alone. You can do this. I'm here for you, especially through COVID. And 
now I have, yeah, 70 plus episodes of such a diverse range of people and they all have the same thing in common. Everybody says the exact same thing. It's when you're at your ground zero, when you're at your lowest you could possibly go, you only can go up and you can do two things. You can stay in it or you can grow from it. And at the end of the day, it's what you choose to do with it. That's wonderful. I, I mean, I was going to ask you what, what's been the most important takeaway, but I think you answered it without me even even asking you that. And I think we both agree, of course, episode 38 uh, was the best yes. one of the whole series. Yeah. But is there another one <laughs> that 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 uh, that has stood out in your mind is, is, or, or maybe was the one you already mentioned with the uh, with the artist that was formerly uh, an addict and homeless? Uh, is there, is there, is that the one or is there another one that really, that if someone were, uh, that you wanted to show trials and tribulations or somebody wanted to, uh, do that first episode, is there one that you would recommend? I and see like, no, because every single person that I've brought on talks about a specific thing. So for me saying that one story is better than the other, it's not even a, like, or one might be favorited than the other. I can't because every single episode is so different. Some are just talking about relationships, some are talking about actual businesses, some are talking about drug, some people are talking about um, gender changing, changes, sorry, um, and becoming like a trans, like there's so much diversity that maybe what one might like would be somebody that would be like, oh, I don't, that's just not something that I'm interested in or that I connect with, but maybe the weeks prior, they're like, oh, this is exactly what I'm feeling. And so it all kind of depends. Like I had one that it was a lady from like Beverly Hills and she does a celebrity and multimillionaire, um, like VIP dating where she has a matchmaking business for like very successful, like elite class. And we were talking about dating and the struggles of dating and me being divorced and trying to like, okay, it's not fun dating in your thirties, just saying. So that was like a really fun episode with, for me personally, because it was exactly what I was going through in that moment. So I connected it on a really, um, personal level. Or if, when I was talking to other moms, like that's when I got really more engaged because it was something that I was personally going through. When we talked, when me and other actors talk, it's the same thing. But then when I have other guests that comes on that has H, um, HIV and hearing their story, no, I don't have HIV. No, I'm not an addict, but God, did I realize how privileged I was. And it just made me open up and again, I had a think outside of myself. I was really able to understand what true empathy was. It's not apathy. It's not sympathy. It's not, it's true. Like, wow. And it's, if I took a step back and I remember like going to bed that night and just learning what gratitude was all over again, every day I wake up and I say three things that I'm grateful for. I write it in my gratitude journal and I will never repeat the same things. Like I even wrote like I was grateful for Popeye biscuits because they're really fucking good. And I know <laughs> it sounds stupid, but like it's the little things that you're like, wow, this biscuit tastes really good. Food is good. I am so thankful that I have the ability to go in a car, fill my car up with gas, drive somewhere safely, going to a restaurant where I can eat. Just that alone is so different. I used to, um, I went to Guatemala and I did missionary work out there and where we would travel in the mountains. And I remember going in these mountains and there's no birth control there. And so if people gave birth to babies and if they weren't healthy or if they couldn't feed them, they would just leave them. And so like a team of the nuns would come and collect these babies and bring them to the nunnery and some would be blind, some would be deaf, some would be so malnourished that they were barely left alive. And they'd bring them back to full health and like full health and try to get them adopted. And when I was working in the nunnery and just like with these babies, it was, I was in my 20s then and it was such an, um, a mind blown experience. And I remember 
after being there for a couple of weeks doing the missionary work and helping out um, with all that stuff, I they drove me to my hotel and I'm at a Sheridan. I'm in a suite and I felt so guilty. I was like, here, these people don't have water. They don't have food. I, like, I remember they were trying to teach me how to fish and like, they don't have a rod. You have these nets and you have to like throw them a certain way. And they're teaching me how to like fish. So like I throw the net, I get the fish and like, I'm eat- they're literally, you're eating what they catch. They brought me to a chicken farm and I had to chase around trying to catch chickens just so I could eat that day. And it's a completely different world. And that's what I also love about trials and tribulations and what I, why I'm so passionate. My goal is to actually have trials and tribulations and bring it around the globe. So I can really show people like, Hey, this is reality. Step outside yourself, really get to know you think your life's hard. Like there is so much going on in this world that people don't even realize because they're just so consumed within their small circle. Where would you want people to either watch or listen to trials and tribulations? Cause thank you for, thank you for those uh, amazing shares. It's, it's uh wow. I mean, it's what a story, but yeah, where can people listen or where would you want them to yeah. come and watch or listen to trials and tribulations? So the majority are on Instagram. Um, if you go to like that play screen, you can see all the majority of the episodes there from when I started till now. So that's on Instagram at Kate Parker official, um, K A Y E. The E is very important because if you don't have the E, it's going to be a whole other thing. Um, but if you want to go on my YouTube, um, at Kate Parker official as well, they have, I think I have about 12 episodes on there um so those were like in-person episodes and then i have like the instagram live episodes so all at kate parker official on youtube or instagram do you also uh put them up as podcasts like on on spotify or apple Podcasts or anything or is that something i did when i had i hired somebody to do all that stuff but he got a full-time job a nine to five so now i have to find somebody else but they will i am going to be hiring somebody to kind of transfer everything over soon i am in the rebranding stage it's kind of i have a lot of i just hired somebody where i have a lot of pieces and now we just have to kind of put everything in motion and get everything organized because it's a little crazy right now with my brand. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of your brand and and of you, I, I, you're like a chameleon, I, and I mean this all complimentary. So I hope you take it that way because I, I mean you're very talented across all. You know, you're acting, you're you're dancing, and out, and you're singing and whatnot. I mean, you're you're a judge. We can talk a little bit about the shot uh, Canada where, where, where that you're a judge on. But you're such a chameleon. Because, like this last one that you posted, uh, I was like, wait, who is that? Like, you, you look totally different. Uh, I mean, it's still you, but 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 you, you can play these different parts. And I think it depends on whom you're working with as a makeup artist or, or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. Working. I mean, you look amazing all the time. That, that goes without <laughs> saying. But it's like, wait, is that Kay? Like, I almost didn't recognize the last photo. Are you blushing? I am. You're making me red. Okay. No, That's all right. and it's so funny because people get, uh, tell me that all the time because like this is me natural. I don't have any makeup on. Like I'm letting my rosacea show. Um, important thing that I like to do is show the reality of who I am. Um, yes, I do have really nice photos. I do model. I and those photos look so different because I'm in tons of makeup and that is a big part of me. But this is typically who I am. I'm just this hippie girl, a little bougie. And I, I'm all about wellness, but yes, I do. I am a very chameleon. I love these sound effects. I can't get enough of them. They're so funny. Um, But yeah. If if they bother you, we can silence them, but I love them. I love it. I I I love it. I think it's fabulous. Um, But yeah, I'm very much a chameleon. And it's funny because I always tell people, I'm like, especially I don't want to call them fans. I don't want to call them followers because that feels weird. Um, so I don't look at people like that, but the people who know me or maybe see me online and they see me in person, nobody recognizes me. And I love that because typically, especially online, I look a certain way. And then when I'm out and about in the real world, I just like, I look like a bum. So normally people won't even, 
um, kind of, there's only been a couple of times where people have spotted me like, Oh, I know who you are, but I like being able to dress up and have fun for work, but I really like just to be my natural self and just show people who I really am about. I am, yeah, I'm just chill and I just love getting to know people. I love connecting with people and I love learning about people and I just want to help people grow and with me. That's it. Well, uh, you know, and, and on that note, uh, speaking of, yeah, I, I, I don't want to get to know anyone. I don't even want to meet them. But speaking of which, let's say hi to everyone that's here listening to our show. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I I love I love everyone, and and I'm the same way. I feel weird calling people <laughs> fans, followers. I mean, you know, but then friends, you know. I mean, I mean, I feel like you know, especially a lot of people here in this community on Fireside is so supportive, so wonderful. You know, spending their time uh, watching a live show. So I want to thank everyone that that's that's here live, and anyone that's that's going to listen in the replays because I know that these shows get a lot of replays. So ev- anyone that's that's here today, you know, uh, you know what? I'm just going to say hi to if you don't mind to, to Lauren, Dave, Mark, Victoria, Sam, Chris, uh, uh, Christian, uh, Rocksteady, of course, Jocelyn, Felicity, David, uh, Woody, and Waitbot. Why not? We'll say hi to our Waitbot. Uh, but no, <laughs> we, we appreciate all of you guys being here and contributing. And uh, and Kay, if you have time, we could even bring up a few people in case they have questions. Yeah, I already know that. I, would love that. I know that Rock Steady is going to want to know if you like pies, and I should have warned you about that. That and for anyone that's in the audience, that is a callback to an episode that Rock Steady did. And was it? It was, must have been Shotgun Candy, which is earlier. It's on Sundays, early morning for us here because he's he's in Australia, and it was about, of course, sexual deviance. And one of them was Charlie Chaplin, who liked to throw pies at women as part of the audition process. You, you, you guys will have to watch that on your own uh, because it is, it's hilarious with that segment. Not that, you know, doing that is, is hilarious, but the way uh, it was presented and rock and rock steady showing, because it was in the days of silent movies. So you'd have to show flat cards, you know, so I can't explain it, but please watch it. And then, then it'll make sense. So when rock steady asks you if, you, if you like pies, that's what he's alluding to. Love it. So, so, uh, so, yeah. Thank you. But uh, and speaking of of uh, of things that, that that are maybe not that kosher, I love the way you handle uh, your TikTok fans and haters and and everyone. And I love your facial expressions, uh, especially when you're disappointed in someone's comment. I I literally have to go back every every now and every few weeks. Uh, I just have to go back and watch that one. And, and, and like you talked about, you know, presenting yourself with all your flaws, not, and I don't see any, but um, presenting yourself that way and making yourself vulnerable. And I, obviously, you know, you're a mother and there was this one, and I don't even know if I'm going to do it justice by explaining it, but there was one where uh, somebody, it was kind of like a, it was a neg, you know, something about, you know, you were showing your mom bod and showing it in all its glory. Oh, and my boob one? Yes. Oh my God. People were loving my saggy boobs. They went on and on talking about how saggy my boobs were. And I was like, okay, let's just take a step back here for a second because I love it. No offense when men have such an input on women's bodies. So not only do, if you're too natural, you, you get shamed for being natural. So, oh my gosh, look at, she's had four children and then I breastfed for like what I feel like a decade. Yeah, my boobs are gonna touch my toes, 100%. And that's just the reality. Like, if I were to get implants, then right away I would have got a same comment about, oh my gosh, look at, she's just another one of those because I'm blonde hair with fake tits. So I got to a point where it was like, no matter what I look like, no matter what I say, no matter what I do, somebody is going to judge me on that. So at first I started playing around with all these people and I would start to do like videos and a response back. And then I realized the algorithm changed on my content. So it all became men who were like bashing women. There's some who were standing up for me, obviously. There's women standing up for me, but generally it became about me, like men or women talking ill, and then me making a video saying, meh, 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 meh. 
And then I had to take a step back from that and I was like, okay, I don't want this to be a reflection of who I am. Although it was fun and I really enjoy making comeback videos just for fun, it became like an identity and I didn't like how the algorithm kind of caught on to that because as soon as the algorithm catches you, that means you're doing something so consistently that that kind of made it a problem for me. So now I just, any time, it's very rare if I see a comment cause I, I'm kind of s slower on uh, TikTok now. Like I used to be a lot more on it and now I've kind of taken a step back from my mental health. I'll go through waves. Um, but right now I'm just focusing on other things um, within my brand. But yeah, with tr uh, Kate Parker on TikTok, I've now kind of, I, Right after that, it w my algorithm changed to a lot of divorce stuff. And then now that I'm going through a divorce process, my lawyer's like, okay, like you gotta quit it. This is not gonna look good for you. And I was like, yeah, but it's joke. It's like literally what I'm going through and I'm trying to make light out of my feelings. And if I don't like showcase them, then how am I gonna like come out of it on the other side? But then there's a whole other aspect of, I had to take a moment and be like, okay. if I was my ex-husband, how would he feel? Is this appropriate? And yes, I didn't say his name. And yes, I didn't like, there's some photos and we did videos together um, before, but now I'm kind of like, okay, like the dynamic of the divorce has changed and I need to respect that. And so I had to take a step back and now my TikToks kind of have a different change. So I don't even interact with any of the comments now. I typically like delete them right away. Or if somebody makes a comment in the chat about something stupid, I will like block them right away. And I'm just trying to really showcase people I'm like, yeah, I am going to be vulnerable. And yeah, I'm going to make light of my situation. I am going to make jokes because healing is not linear. It's very up and down. There's going to be times where I'm doing so good and I'm so happy and I'm drinking all the water and I'm meditating and I'm exercising. But then there's going to be like this week where I grinded so hard from the week prior that I burnt myself out. And now I'm just watching casual, like the new Netflix show on my couch for like a week straight. And that's okay too. And I'm just eating all the junk food and I'm taking a time out, but that's okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, no, no. And so uh, and I think it was because of your expressive face. And I think the, I don't know if the right word is the exasperation, maybe. I, I hope I'm saying it right. Where, 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 where he like almost disguised it as a compliment. Like, oh, I love mom bods. I mean, uh, I love them saggers or something like something to that effect. Saggers. He called them saggers. And just the look of, of pure, uh, ex I think ex exasperation is the right word or, or, or if someone knows it, please, please put it right in there or just like, what are you saying? The pain in that face was just brilliant what, what you did with it. And then, you know, you, you responded appropriately, I thought, but if, uh, you know, uh, please make sure that you go over to TikTok and give Kay Parker uh, official uh, with, uh, with, with an E, Kay Parker, um, a follow because she's, she's got some great content over there. And I know one of them, not that we should judge ourselves on how many views we get, but, you know, I think one of them has like 1.7 million views uh, and uh, and you have 150,000 followers. So I'd love to bring you back and, and invite you back and maybe even uh, do a deep dive into TikTok and, and social media and, and how to build that if it's something okay. that you're interested in, if you know, especially if you have something to promote. Uh, so, yeah, I mean. I would I, love that for sure. What, Wonderful. Uh, also, um, would you have a little bit of time so we can bring oh people God. up? I have all the time in the world for you. I have nowhere to be. This is the only oh. thing I booked just for you. You have my full attention. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Because I know that people would, would love to chat with you. Oh. So around this time, I'd, I'd like to, you know, if anyone else would like to, if anyone would like to come up and, and meet Kay and maybe ask a few questions or ask a question and then, uh, and then we can, uh, have you come up and if you want to be on camera great if you don't that's all for uh, but most of all thank you all so much for spending some of your sunday your easter your greek easter sunday with us your orthodox easter sunday sorry uh with us so thank you guys and uh, i also wanted to bring up uh the shot how did how did you how did they find you or, or how did you end up being a judge on the shot canada which you said is going to be streaming soon right yeah so it's going to be this season's going to be streaming in june and the shot found me through tiktok so wonderful so, wonderful 
Yeah, the uh, the manager found me on uh, TikTok, and he uh, found me on there, and he was like, "Hey, I don't know how I'm gonna use you, but I know like you have something special, so I would love to manage you." And he heard my voice, and he didn't know if he wanted to like manage me as an artist or manage me as a host. And he was like, "I just know I'm gonna use you for something." So we created a show called Music Is Life. Uh, where we travel across Canada um, interviewing artists, like music artists, and that was great, but then COVID happened. So we, all we got to do was film the pilot, and then my show obviously got canceled due to COVID, and we just never built it back up, just the circumstances of the filming industry. And mm -hmm. after that point, I got really bummed because I was like, oh, I, I was this close to having my own, like, my own TV show, and... So that's when the shot came about and he's like, well, how would you like to be a judge on there? So I was um, a guest judge for the first two seasons and then now I'm an actual resident judge and this is the third season that I've been on. So yeah, I'm super blessed. That's amazing and wonderful. So I'd like to welcome to the stage a couple of, of our fellow firesiders and uh, always, always great to have them here, but Lauren and then Victoria. Uh, uh, you know what, I'll invite you guys to camera. If you wanna be on camera, wonderful. If not, no worries. Uh, I'll see if I can figure it out. And uh, I, I was uh, blessed enough to be with, uh, I, I did Victoria's uh, one one person, is, a, is that a one person show that I was a, a guest on? Sorry, I have to do a screenshot here to uh, commemorate this. Uh, let's see, invite to video. So uh, I, I've invited Lauren and Victoria. And if you guys, uh, or if you would want to just unmute and ask a question, by all means, please do. And uh, we have... With us, Kay Parker. Lauren, if you'd, if you'd like to quickly uh, introduce yourself, and then I, if you have a few questions for Kay, that'd be wonderful. You are muted. <laughs> Technology is so annoying. Can we just say that? It, yeah. It I was like, I have no glasses on. I couldn't see. <laughs> and then in the moment that I pointed to my eyes, I was like, bitch, you fucking about to turn 41. I don't know if I'm allowed to curse on here, Fireside. Sorry. Y'all approved me to be in here in the first place, so. Um, well, I, for a second there, also, I thought you were going to say, like, <laughs> how dare you? I'm deaf and, I, I, and I'm mute. And I was like, I, okay, uh, my name Imagine. is P-A-U-L is all I can say, so... Okay, I didn't know you were pointing Imagine, at the glasses. I thought you were but, yeah. No, but like, if I had the nerve to be deaf and mute and come on here and ask to ask, like ask questions, come on, <laughs> come on. No, but I was as soon as you said that, I was like literally plucking like my chin hairs in there, and I was like, oh shit, let me be on. I was, you know, because apparently when you turn forty-one, you get a lot of chin hairs and you lose your eyebrows. Love it. Good thing so I have two eyebrows. Um. Yeah, well, I would, I, I think I was hoping maybe you knew someone because you're in the industry that could maybe make like a lace front wig that I could attach to my face. Like if I take my chin hairs and I, like, could they do that? Like a transplant into your eyebrows. Yeah. I will uh, keep Do you know anybody? <laughs> okay. Let me know. Um, my question was this. Honestly, um, first of all, I think that you're fantastic. Paul, you're awesome. You already know that. I'm not going to inflate your ego any more than it already is. Um, but uh, I think that you're like my spirit animal. Um, I'm sitting here listening to you and I'm like, damn, this girl is saying like everything that I say all the time. And I'm sure my husband is sick of hearing is like how I just want to be this like person that shows the real shit. And why can't people just be fucking real? Like what? Like what's wrong with that? Right. Like being vulnerable for real. Like, like, yes, you know what? I'm 41. I'm a mom. My tits sag. I've had three kids, you know, um, yeah. I've got stretch marks, uh, like all the stuff and there's nothing wrong with that. And, but yet we pretend all the time. And I think it's kind of refreshing that you're doing the complete opposite of that. I had no idea who you were until today, but I'm excited to follow you and, See what you got going on. Seriously, Thank you might you. have a new fan. You might. I love it. So, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm stoked. I, so, thanks, Paul, for bringing her on. That was amazing. Thank you. No, I, I agree. Love that you I agree. That. 
yeah, you're cool. It's, it's, it's refreshing to hear. I like that, uh, you know, honesty is, I think is important and, and you don't get a lot of candor, I think out of the, uh, like in the industry anywhere or just anywhere in life, you don't get people who have can a lot of candor. And I think that's important, you know, and to see that in celebrity of any status is pretty cool. Um, and I think these platforms like this, Fireside, you know, they give you an opportunity to do that, to just be like kind of just normal again and like talk to like regular normal people. I think that's nice. You know, it's so, but Lauren, I feel just like you, like at the end of the day, I'm a mom and I don't feel like I'm any different than anybody else. The only difference is, is that yeah. I was just lucky enough to get slightly popular on an app, which therefore translated into me being able to have a platform that I could be like, yeah, like I could take my stomach and I could like stretch it out to here from being pregnant for three, like with four children. And yeah, I just, I'm so tired of women just ganging up on each other and trying to one up each other. Oh, for sure. And I'm tired of women just looking like at each other as threats when I'm like, girl, like I purposely don't wear a bra just to like, so because people were commenting on them, now I'm going to be like, you want to see saggy? I'll, I'll show you saggy all day. Oh and yeah. I Listen, I only wear a bra for my husband's sake. <laughs> I literally only wear one because I don't want him, you know, to protect my, his modesty for me, you know, because I would let these girls swing. I'm fine looking like an Ethiopian mother. You know what? I breastfed three kids. Right. Those assholes did this to me. So, <laughs> you know, I also walk around and I let them know that like, because you did this to me, I have the right to disrupt your life till the day you I die. I have said mom, the same thing to mine every single day yeah. I was like oh you think you have anything against me I was like you destroyed my body two of you took 18 hours to push out of neither of you can ever say anything to me ever again I'm sorry yeah I have all yeah I have all teenagers I don't know how old you are but my children are all teenagers so it's interesting yeah. now I have a very incriminating uh picture of my 16 year old son and his buddy that I'm just waiting to unleash waiting for the opportunity man and he knows i have it and i'm like just rub me the wrong way bro <laughs> just do it i can't wait so I yeah know. it was nice to meet you i um i did have one content creation question for you yes in regard to like your tiktoks or like any type of like short form content creation do you tend to batch create do you feel like that is a good thing to do to create a batch of content that you can just blast out all week like you just create on one day and then you're done and then you move it yeah. on along so, to like your other tasks there are people that literally do that so they say yeah. they'll every single week they will spend one day on drafting on the content that they want to create and then in one day it's their content day where they literally the entire day they just do content so they take their drafts of what they want to create because you have to remember you have to technically um in order to be successful on social media the algorithm for tiktok right now is you have to have four videos a day and it has to be spread throughout the entire day so in order for you and you have to do that consistently and that might change but right now, okay four videos a day so for normal people um that are doing this full time, they will have a content day where they'll just know exactly what they want to do. But for me, um, I have so much going on that I, I used to, I started off like that. That's how I got the following that I did. And honestly, if I were to do TikTok full time, I would be able to get to where I want to go in no time, but I don't, because I'm not consistent with it like I used to, I only do like one a day, but they don't even get the views I want because I'm not being consistent with it. So for okay. me, I just do one video a day, if that. I haven't really posted anything in like a couple of days, to be honest. And that's only because I've been so busy and just taking a time off. But I would just say whatever is a balance for you. And just... Okay. 
I like to do everything that's on trend. And what's really interesting about TikTok and generally all social media apps is things are trending, but they're only trending for so long. So and le- if you're creating original content and you have a specific niche, that's one thing. But if you're actually just doing TikTok by saving pre-made sounds and you're just having fun with it, those trends are only trending for so many minutes, so many hours, so many days. And you want to get it before it spikes. So you always have to kind of be aware. So I guess it just depends on what kind of creator you are on how you are. Yeah, I'm definitely more like a very specific content creator. Uh, My background is uh, I'm a licensed massage therapist. I specialize more like sports massage. Um, And uh, I'm obsessed with gut health and nutrition and all that stuff. I was powerlifter. Uh, yeah, so, so then I guess since um, that's specifically yeah. niche, I would do a content creation day where you formulate the day before exactly what you want, exactly what you want to film, the trending sounds you want to use. Take the time to really understand your niche and every day post something like do a series and be like, hey, this week we're going to talk yeah. about gut health. This week we're going to talk about this. And this week we're going to and showcase that in all your videos for the week. Choose a topic and niche it out. Um, that's what I would recommend. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Paul. You're awesome. Be safe, y'all. Uh, and uh, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you so much. <laughs> this was great, Paul. This was my first time tuning in and uh, like live, I only ever get to hear you in the interim. And uh, this was great. Oh. Not listening. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Cool. You're muted. Cool rocks. You're I muted. Was, <laughs> it was. It was like I'm yeah. deaf. <laughs> You're blind. <laughs> You're blind. Uh, I was saying uh, thank you, and please share. Please share it. Uh, uh, what the replay once it's done, it would really help us out. Oh, 100. You know, Seriously. Especially now that I'm here on Fireside doing all my content here. Uh, of yeah. course, I want to get it out there, and I want to get the word out. And then, Kay, I wanted to ask you, is it uh, Linktree, uh, Linktree slash Kay Parker Official? Is that your website? Is that how? Okay. Right. So if you want to double I check. I did follow some of your stuff. Yeah, I did. I did click on you. I followed your Instagram, and I'm going to grab your TikTok, too. But I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, you're cool. You're Thank a cool you. chick. Keep doing it. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, bless you guys. You, yeah. you're, you're welcome to stay oh. on stage if, if you'd like. Or I can just- oh, listen. I don't want to steal your show, okay? Um, but I'm a mute. <laughs> okay, wonderful, wonderful. You know, we're from Brooklyn. You know, we talk a lot. Let me shut up. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. <laughs> no. Thank you. Uh, Victoria, welcome. Uh, I don't know if you'd like to, uh, if you have a question uh, or if you'd like to come on video. If you do, if not, no worries. But welcome, Victoria. Thank you so much for I being am in. You don't want to see me on video right now, but another time, definitely. <laughs> So great meeting all of you. Paul, I love you. Paul, yes, you were on my show. One Nation, One Mission, One Promise. We got to do more. It was just, you were just amazing and fantastic. I had such a great time. Kate, is that how you pronounce your name? Kate? Hey, how do you K-A-Y-E. pronounce your name? Y-E. Just like the letter K. How do you pronounce it? Just K. Oh, just K? Oh, yeah. gotcha. See, I'm making it so complicated. Kay, oh, what a joy to meet you. I know, right? See, you're teaching me already just with your name. And I love, Lauren, it was so great listening to you and, and hearing your, 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 you know, your comments and point of view. And, and I was just- Thank you, I appreciate that, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. And, you know, in a, in a, in, um, with, in, to, to just continue with this conversation about being real, I think one of the beautiful things is, is the more we're all real on camera with each other, it really allows other people to recognize that they don't have to put that pressure on them about having a facade, about then K, then Victoria, about if that's the case. And the thing that I often think about when people start saying things like, oh, you know, this is what's happening to you. And, oh, how can you look like that? Or how can you be like that? I often think it says so much about that person and who they are. 
and what they're putting themselves through. And and I think that's another thing is is to really say to ourselves that this, you know, if someone's projecting that, that it isn't about us. So I just love everything that you're doing, Kay. And I just um followed you just now until while you while talking way before they told me that I could. <laughs> I just went over and started looking at you. I was like, oh my gosh, this is cool. Thank you so much for the tip about TikTok. I just started on TikTok and I spent the day trying to do four videos. I got through one. I did 28. I created 28. I did the batch thing, but I uploaded four of them throughout the day. And I was like, oh, I'm not getting much reaction. Maybe I'm not supposed to be consistent. And just remember, stop the consistency. Because if you stop the consistency, that's when everything will change. So it's funny because yes, I do have multiple videos. One's like 1.9 mil, another's 1.8 mil, 1.7 mil. You do get those numbers, but that's when you're, like I said, the app's goal is to have you on the app as much as possible. So the more you involve yourself in the app, the more people see you, the more people hear from you, the more interactions you make. That's when every, like, that's when you're going to become successful. So right now I'm on a hiatus. And you can really see it because when I post a video, I get less than 1,000 views and I have a lot of views and they won't, it's just the algorithm won't push out my videos and they're not going to tell you that, but that's the reality. And I'm not here bashing an app because the app's great. It's just that the algorithm craves consistency. So the more you just don't put in the time and the effort and do good content creation with good lighting, original, originality, they're going to see that. And they're not going to push your videos and you'll get a couple of views because you're new and you just started, but they want to see what else you got. They want to know who you are. They want to understand your niche. They want to get a full idea if you're going to be what they need you to be to make the money. Absolutely. And I, you know, and and that's actually with every, with every app. So thanks so much for sharing that. I wanted to, um, touch base with you and and I'm so sorry about the loss of your son and I actually lost one of the loves of my life uh two years ago I lost my mom thank you and I and it was it was very 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 challenging and then I had just the most you know I I feel her all the time and I just had the most incredible experience with her not too long ago which really uplifted Uh, my grief to another level. And I was wondering for you, do you find that you're enjoying life even more in honor of an appreciation of having gone through grief? Is that something that you're experiencing right now? Because that's where I'm at right now, where everything I do, I, I want to just have the greatest time in honor of feeling that kind of loss because I, it just makes me appreciate life and loving life that much more. Is that something you, how are you moving forward with it? Is that something you're experiencing? I I love that you said that because this is, um, you're in, well, let me just backtrack a little bit more. Um, when I was studying grief, there is stages to grief. And you're at that stage of, well, it's kind of like, it's like acceptance and building a new. And that's very common with people who had a dramatic loss. So when you are going through a dramatic loss, you have to realize that the people that are going through that know what it's like to have something taken away from you that leaves your whole situation or circumstances of your complacency and that's not said in a mean way it's just everybody lives a complacent life typically it's everything comes routine you do the same things every day you go to your job you eat it's just routine and then the universe shakes you up a little bit and through your grief and understanding your feelings and the ups and downs of grief you get to a point where you realize wow life is really short And memories, making memories, creating that connection, having those emotions, the vulnerability, um, putting yourself out there, taking those risks, those become very apparent. And 
I don't know if you found this with yourself, but for me, the friends that I used to have three years ago before I lost my son, I don't have, I think I might have less than a third of them left. And the people who I now have surrounding me are completely new. And I always like to talk about vibrational frequencies and now my hippie side's really gonna come out. So I'm, I'm sorry in advance, but I'm not sorry. Um, when you're in a high vibrational state, you're actually, the energy that you're putting out is what's gonna be reciprocated back to you. So as somebody who have, has experienced a dramatic loss, I'm at a vibrational frequency where I've overcome so much trauma and grief. Now I'm looking at life differently. I always talk about how my son's death, he had to sacrifice his life so I could get mine back. I was very unhappy for a very long time. Again, I was a people pleaser. I was living the life that other people expected me to live. And I did that for 31 years where I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to be a good girl that puts my head down, that only speaks when I'm spoken to. I'm a good Christian girl and I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get engaged. I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to well, get married, have a baby. And I had all the steps. I did them not in the right order, but that's what my family said was the way I should live. And that's what I thought was best for me. And it wasn't until my son died where I was like, I really took a step back and I'm like, what am I doing? And now I look at life and you, I'm in an understanding where life is what you manifest and what you say will come into fruition. And I really had to learn how to be mindful of my thoughts and my words because your brain is like a computer. Your energy is only going to reciprocate what you're putting into it. So if I'm saying that I'm nothing and I'm worthless and I'm a nobody and I'm, that is what I'm telling myself. And that's the frequency that's coming out. So when I, all these bad things kept happening to me and all these people who were surrounding me were doing bad things and I found myself in bad situations, all I could blame was myself. It wasn't until the moment where I was like, well, why don't I manifest for something better? Why don't I dream bigger? Why don't I take that time to actually really take a step into myself and what is joy? What is happiness? What brings me pleasure? And so I started doing this new thing and it's very simple and I've been living this way for a while. It's I wake up and I'm given an option or a choice and I quit my nine to five. I had benefits. I had, um, I don't know what it's called, but like a pension, I had a pension. I had the life that I was told I should always have. And I gave it all up for my brand. And I didn't know what was going to happen with it. I just knew that every day I wake up, when I choose to do something, I ask myself, is this going to make me happy without causing any harm to others? If it's a yes, I do the thing. And that is how I live my life now. It's just saying yes to things that serve me. And some people may call me selfish. Some people, I've lost a lot of friends because they're like, oh, it's all about you. And I'm like, yes, yes, it is. And that's not saying I don't put other people first. That's not saying that I don't take time out of my day to connect with friends or help them out. That's not what I'm saying. It's saying, yes, I'm putting boundaries. Yes, I am selfish because I'm choosing my happiness first. Yes, I am going to live the life that I'm manifesting and I, I do know I'm going to get there. And I even tell people now, and I, Paul and I probably talked about in the past, it's like, yeah, I might be in this moment now, but I won't stay here forever because I'm already manifesting where I want to be. And I know I'm going to get there. So it's just me continuing to have that, those healthy choices, that positive mindset, that's stepping out of your comfort zone, that complacency to be like, yeah, People are going to come and go when you least expect it. And all I know that I have is right now. And right now I'm here with you, Victoria. I'm here with Paul. I just like spoke to other people and I'm telling my story. And that's where my energy and my time is being focused on. Because all I know is now. I don't know what the future is going to hold in the past of the past. There's no point in looking back. And that's kind of where I'm at. And that's wonderful. There are two things that you mentioned here that I, I just want to, I'm so, in, in it, it, it is not a hippie thing. It is actually life. It is being present. 
And there's something else that I want to add, because that's so what I believe in for the longest time, which is called the law of attraction, yeah. really, and, yeah. and vibration and connecting with that. And the beauty of it is, is that if you start to think about and really align with the joy of your thoughts and you start to think because you, you, a thought will come or a feeling comes and you think, well, is that really how I want to feel? And then you could start and you know that you have more control over your mind than you think about. And one of the things that I started to do every and not just about every morning, but every chance I have, which is so beautiful and so magical is what's called, and, and I got this, I don't know if you listen to Abraham Hicks, who I really love, but one of the suggestions is segment intention. So for example, we're here together right now, and before you come on the show, before I came on this show, I would write, Paul is amazing, of course he's gonna have a great guest, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna have a good time. So I'm already setting myself up for a great experience. And nine out of 10, it, it, it amazes me what returns. And if it doesn't, then it's like, oh, okay, maybe there's something here that I have to work on. And I love that you talk about that because that is just, that is magic. That's the magic of life. And the second thing is, we all think about making investments. I'm going to invest, you know, in this property to get equity. I'm going to invest my money here. I'm going to invest there. And the greatest investment that I always ask people to think about as well, invest in your memories. Try every day to create one great memory. If that's all you can do, then try and do that. So I just love, I love your work. I love that you brought that up. This is so amazing. And yes, Paul, I can't wait for you to have Kay back and to talk more. And thank you so much for having me and sharing this amazing information and knowing that you're just having the most beautiful ripple effect around the world. And, and I just wish you joy and continuing success. And I can't wait to meet you and um, connect with you again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Victoria. You're amazing uh, and wonderful. And you're, you're a great asset to this platform and the and the content creator community here on fireside and i, I you know I, personally i want to thank you for having me uh you know believing in me and bringing me on to to your show which which was uh which was amazing and and same with us you know people in the audience that have either asked me to come on their shows and whatnot so i'm, I'm sorry if we let you down this time but but uh, you know keep thinking positive and uh no, i'm just kidding I, I think this has been a great show so thank you thank you victoria My pleasure. Thank you. I'm going to. Okay. You're welcome to stay up, but if not, yeah, pop back down and then if you want to come back up, just let us know. But I I'll think we're, we're getting close to the end. Yeah. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, I think we're getting close to the end. Kay, I'm, uh, is there anything else? Is there any final thoughts or uh, uh, I, I'm actually, if you don't mind, I'm going to promote my next show, which I probably shouldn't schedule shows back to back because I have a feeling one of these shows is going to go for you know, I'm going to pull a Joe Rogan and go for two or three hours or more. But uh, at 4 p.m. in about uh, a little bit over ha half an hour, I have my good friend Bill Cott. So if you guys want to come back for that, that would be amazing. Or we might still be going. I, I don't know. But uh, Bill Cott is at 4 p.m. And Bill Cott, you know him from uh, The Ringer. He was in the movie The Ringer. He was in Galaxy Quest. Um, he uh, he played Fred Mertz uh, with uh, with the live I Love Lucy show. He's, he's just a uh, very talented uh, improv coach. He's an award-winning improv coach. And we're going to uh, talk a little bit about his career and about improv uh, and about all that. And then in the following week, I have, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the following week we have uh, Naomi Grossman uh, who played Pepper on American Horror Story and, uh, and a season, a couple of seasons there and American Horror Stories, the spinoff. And she's, you know, from the groundlings in Los Angeles, which is the, uh, long form, you know, improv and sketch comedy troupe that uh, people get hired from when they go off to Saturday Night Live and whatnot. Uh, she's a, also a, a yogi. So that's Naomi Grossman. And then on Tuesday, I have my friend Joe Stapleton, who is a color commentator for the World Series of Poker. And very funny. He's, he's doing his stand up. He used to open for Norm MacDonald 
uh, he and I were actually working on doing a show in Vegas. And obviously it turns out, uh, you know, for, for reasons that we didn't, that I didn't know at the time, you know, why that didn't end up happening. But, um, and then Chris Kloos, who is a writer, uh, producer and writer, but he's most well known for uh, SCTV. And I met him uh, when he was doing Mad TV. So these are some great shows that are coming up and I would love for you guys to come back and listen to those. But Kay, uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your very uh, out of your busy schedule and uh, and uh, sharing it with us because I, I think that people really got a lot out of it. So thank you. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to bring up or chat about or no? I just, how, how can we? Yeah, just thank you so much. And any support means anything. And even if it's just you listening in today and supporting Paul, like that's all that it, it's about. And yeah, you can find me on all platforms except for Twitter. I'm not a Twitter girl. That's just one more app that I'm just not interested in putting my time into because I can't split myself up anymore. But it's at Kate Parker Official and. Yeah, we, I have the clothing line coming up. So if you guys are following me, you're going to see a lot of that going on. Um, if you want to meet in person, I'll be in Vegas from May 1st to the 5th. So if anybody else is in Vegas, let's all get together. I think it'd be so great to, yeah, meet and get to know each other in person. Um, otherwise, yeah, I will. Instagram is kind of where you'll see my day to day, my behind the scenes. TikTok is more of just, I'm in a mood and I make a video and I post it and, um, I do lives on TikTok, so I do Cooking with Kay, which is very fun. Um, I have so much fun doing Cooking with Kay. Last time, my stove caught on fire, so that was hilarious. And this is why you need to come watch Cooking with Kay, because something always happens every single time. But the food always turns out marvelous, even if my whole stove is on fire. Um, yeah, and I also um, I do Mindful Mornings with Kay. So there's times where I do like meditations and where I talk about like distress tolerance or mental health. Um, I do a lot of series like that sometimes depending on how much time I have. But yeah, just uh, all the follow and supports would mean everything to me in whatever capacity you care to do so that resonates with you. So just, yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Okay, it's, it's been wonderful. And I'm so looking forward to uh, Las Vegas, because I'd I'd like to I'll protect you. I, I'll do my best to to protect you while you're here. But we won't let anything bad happen to you this time. We'll turn it around, uh, and maybe we can collaborate on some kind of a TikTok video or yeah. or uh, it's it's amazing because it's you know it's not what's important in life. But I had a video go hit like seven hundred and thirty thousand or seven hundred thirty forty thousand views. And I was like, wait, what? Like this is it was just mind blowing that. One video has a little bit more than 15 years on YouTube. Uh, you know, obviously, I didn't pay attention to that platform, but uh, it's it's incredible. So your success uh, is incredible on well, not just on TikTok, but in life. So thank you so much, and and I you know really want to wish you continued success. You're such a beautiful person uh, on the outside and on the inside, where it counts. So thank you for for taking the time and sharing it with us. Thank you so much. Is that it? Anything else, Kay? Oh my gosh. I, I I think, I don't know. I think I'm all out. I'm usually the one in your shoes where I'm just like asking the questions, but uh, it's been funny these past couple of weeks. Like I said, ever since I wrote the article out, it's been the opposite where I'm now going on shows and I'm like, oh, we're talking about me. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Well, you make an amazing guest and maybe it's because of your experience of, of being on, on this side where you're the one that's always asking questions, yeah. you know? So, so, so maybe uh, it's nice that you have that experience because you, now you kind of know where, where the conversation can go and, and what you as an interviewer want to hear. So I think it's wonderful that, that you've had that experience because you're an amazing guest. So, hey. so, and get used to it <laughs> because more and more people are going to want to interview you. Of oh, course. No. Yeah. I think it's all about just what's, talking about what resonates uh, with people. And I love that you're able to bring people up and I love it when people ask questions because that enables me to be able to give them the information that they specifically want to know. So I just, this platform's amazing. Everything that I'm seeing, I'm like, okay, I need to start doing this for my show. I, I'm obsessed with it. And uh, yeah, I thank you so much for having me. And if anybody has questions, like feel free to DM me or if you want to work with me, just always reach out. I'm super chill and let's create that connection. 
Wonderful. Well, uh, as soon as you have a few minutes, uh, when you come back on the app, you'll see in the bottom right, uh, you can, or normally that's where you hit to start a show. But I think if, if you're not a, if you're not a content creator, you can always hit that and pitch your show. And I think that within, within days, you, you could be a content creator on here and we would love to have you on this platform. I think uh, so you kind of saw the way it works. I think the picture quality is, you know, it's better than Instagram and whatnot. I know that you have your fans both places, but there's no reason that you can't record it here and then, and then re-upload it somewhere else or, exactly. you know, chop it up and put it up as short clips on, on Instagram, you know, the shorts and, uh, or, you know, the, the reels and TikTok and, and all that. So yeah, th- thank you so much. And I, ho- I hope you decide to come over here. Yes. I think I'm going to, this is amazing. I love it. I, you know, at, at least every now and then you could, you could, uh, grace us with your presence and do yes, something. Anytime like you'd like me on, I'll come on. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, let's do it again next week then. Perfect. <laughs> every Sunday. Uh, okay. Well, okay. Thank you so much again, uh, for being here, please everyone follow K. You can find me at paulvato.com or vato.tv. Uh, if you can click on the link there, the link tree will take you to, to K Parker official and follow all of her uh, social media and all that. So folks, uh, thank you so much. I'm going, uh, that's the end of the show. And I'm, I think I can play, uh, do I play weight bot? I forget what the, uh, what the uh, protocol is, but I'm going to invite the wait bot up and uh, thank you guys so much for being here. And in about a minute, we'll close the, the show down. Thank you. I love it. Hey, thank you. You're the best. I love you. In this hombre, hold another bottle. Look a little closer, cigar in Moscato. An actor in improv coming from Chicago. Outdoor, make way for Paul Vato.